<sighs> Did you know that bitches love cannons? <laughs> Please, this is not how we're starting our podcast. This is absolutely how we're starting the podcast. <laughs> With YouTube like... poop? <laughs> With yeah. YouTube poop! It's not it's YouTube, YouTube poop. poop. You said it was. I asked you, is this YouTube poop? You said yes. Well, I lied. It's an abridged series. It's a beautiful art form on YouTube where people dub over different types of anime, but they abridge the series. Kind of like uh, whatever, whatever, wizard people. It's called Dear Reader See, Wizard People. took it very personally. And I would consider that YouTube poop. I feel like YouTube poop is like a specific category. Yeah. Okay. Oh, like memeified content. Yes. Yeah. This, I have is, a, I have this a is a long form meme though. Yes, but it's also like Dragon Ball Z abridged was really the first one that did it. And it was like, it was the idea of like, there's 500 episodes of Dragon Ball Z, but really the story is like an hour. You could just like all of the... BS of like, I will defeat you and I'll use the cannon of the sun. <laughs> oh, that's gone. It's just like, we're gonna fight. All right, let's do it. Ba 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 ba. End of fight. And you fight like a bitch, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, ways to watch animes, but faster. You need to educate yourself on some YouTube culture. But bitches do love cannons, and those bitches are Jeremy and I. Welcome to the Black Wolves Podcast. My name's Logan Riley Bruner. I'm Jeremy Van Suarez. And I ain't no bitch, Jacob Wade. Housekeeping. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll take you through some housekeeping. Housekeeping. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Hello. All right, uh, let's go through some housekeeping. We recently got to record some more Black Wolves interviews, so we've got content coming at you soon. Uh, what else? I ordered a new guitar bag so that I yeah! could take my guitar to the shop. Covers! And, yeah, covers coming soon. My guitar, I mean, it's in bad shape, guys. It's buzzing, and oh, there's no. a there's a point yeah. at which you get high on the fretboard where a half step sounds like a whole step mm. because the string mm. is so close to the fret that it's skipping one. Oh, yeah. no. It's bad. It's bad, so I can't play certain songs. It's just like, I need my guitar fixed. Uh, is this the longest you've gone without playing a John Mayer song on your guitar? I've been playing them down... Down, 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 down the down neck, the right. yeah. Is it, is it more of a challenge, or? Yeah, I mean, my voice does go that low, but it just doesn't sound right to the ears. You feel You're me? It's like, yeah. this is not it. This yeah. isn't the song. This ain't it. So that makes sense. Yeah. I'm really glad the covers are getting a lot of love this week. Thanks to everybody who's been watching our covers recently. We've been getting a lot more views on that. Yeah. In other news, the PatCast is still on its new PatCast channel, and you can find clips on our original Black Wolves Productions YouTube channel. And also, we're on TikTok. If you haven't followed us over there yet, go over to our page and you can see our short form content there. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of housekeeping, I think that's it. There's one more kind of housekeeping thing. Like my job? Or... No, that's, that's, no. We'll that's, talk all, about that's a whole topic. topic. I was going to say it's kind of housekeeping because it's not us, but it is related to us. Uh, the lovely folks over at Bellhop uh, did an interview with Miss Gus Burney this week. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the, over on their the channel. Are they not podcast? Their podcast, Bell? the Bells and Whistles podcast. Bells and Whistles yeah. podcast. Yeah, they did a whole hour long interview with Gus talking about her new show, Shining Veil, which is over on Stars. Yeah. Um, so we're super excited about that too. You should go check that out. Uh, Bell Hop, of course, Ethan Burney, Ryan Quigley, collective members. Uh, we love them. You should too. Woo! Wow. Damn. Yeah. Uh, new sounds. And there's new sounds on the board. So there's always new them. sounds. There, yeah, to... Each week there are new sounds on the board. Yeah. Let us know what your favorite sounds are. Let us know which ones you hate. We'll uh, get rid of them. We will. We are good at taking feedback. Yeah. Because we need that. We do. We really do. We love your comments. Friends, you two saw a movie without me again. Yeah. And it's okay because I didn't want to see this movie and I made you guys aware that I didn't oh, want to see this movie. Oh, you made us very aware. Um, you two saw Licorice Pizza. I yes. think you should start on this one. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so yeah, you know, we're, we're down. Logan and I are down to like the last, ha not even handful, few Oscar movies that we haven't watched. Best was, picture movies. Yeah, There's a bunch of movies that have like best actor noms yeah. or like... But we're trying to get through all the best pictures because last year we were so bad. I remember last year's podcast. Yeah. We were like, we've I haven't seen, seen any of these. One, yeah, 
uh, maybe, and we like this one, so it should win. But, but yeah. yeah, no, we. Gotta... I still haven't seen like half the movies from yeah, last year. Yeah. So we're, we're trying were... to be informed this year. Yeah, we were down to Nightmare Alley, which I said no because I know you wanted to watch it. Yep. Well, uh, okay. Uh, Drive My Car, which was a three-hour movie, and it was already like eight thirty by the time. Yeah, we started. We I want to see wanna... Drive My Car. Yeah, that looks. It looks really good. Yeah. Um, and so I said. And so I said, uh, we haven't watched Licorice Pizza, so let's watch that. Uh, and that was a mess. Licorice Pizza. Um, <laughs> I'm just preemptively. Hmm. I remember first watching the trailer in movie theaters, and my compatriots here nodded their heads. Interesting. By the end of the trailer. And I think I was the only one who shook his head. Right. Well, I think I nodded my head because the trailer really did not make the age difference clear. Okay, please, Logan. That first trailer did not was not like, it she's an adult and he's a kid. It was like, they look similar in age. Okay, Licorice Pizza, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, starring Alana Haim of Haim fame, Cooper Hoffman, son of the Philip Seymour Hoffman. late and great, uh, Bradley Cooper, George it DiCaprio. Does not star Bradley Cooper. It does no, star Bradley it Cooper. Yes, does. it does. If you are in eight minutes and 23 seconds of the movie. You are not starring. So but you're just going to disregard every single cameo in existence? They're not stars. They're cameos. Well, stars are doing the cameos. You've got a star doing a cameo. Thus, he is starring. No, in the movie. No, no, he's a star no. doing a cameo. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Matt know, Damon semantics. doesn't star in Interstellar. No. He's in it longer than Bradley Cooper. But he doesn't star in it. Yeah, true. Whatever. These are all opinions. Yeah. Tom Waits, Skylar Gisondo, and Benny Safdie are all in this movie. And Sean Penn. I don't know if he's And that. Sean Penn. Yeah, he's not in the uh, the first Google cast list. Uh, is Sean Penn in this movie longer than Bradley Cooper? Uh, I was only timing Bradley <laughs> Cooper because I knew he got nominated for the SAG Award for Best Supporting Actor, and someone had told me that he was only in five minutes of the movie, so I wanted to see if they, they were, were serious wrong. or kidding. <laughs> it was eight minutes. It was, I, I timed the moment he appeared on screen to when he'd exit the scene, and then I'd start when he showed back up, and it was eight minutes and 23 seconds. Okay. Okay. So let's... Of a two-hour and 16-minute movie. Right. I'm gonna start with the good, because... There are some goods to this movie. It's shot beautifully. It's gorgeous. The production value and design Extremely is high. great. The costumes are good. The actors are good. Yeah. I the really like are quite good. I really like Alana Heim. She did really well. And critics are saying it's a star making performance for her. I would agree. She, yeah. she is very good in this movie. I would continue to see Alana Heim in other movies. Um the soundtrack captures Fun. the nostalgia. Um Thinking about it a couple days after, I did like the setting of the story. I liked the time frame. Sure. You know, I liked the context around which the story was happening. Right. Because the story was not really my favorite. You might be pressing this button a lot. Um, yeah. Especially for this I one. don't really like... Story, as I said, um, it's just, it's weird. How was it 2022 and we're still making movies about relationships between 15 year olds and 25 year olds? Um, and like out of the gate, they're like, I'm 25 and he's like, I'm 15. Right. Yeah. And is the movie trying to normalize this? 100%. Ah. No doubt, it. they the movie very much pushes for they should be together. Dude. Yeah, and I was like watching it, being like, you know what? Maybe by the end of this movie, they're just gonna be friends. Nope. You know, maybe and they're closer than ever, aren't they? They kiss for at the first time at the end. At the, very end. At the end. Uh. And it's it's that moment that's supposed to be like, yes. Finally, they're together! And I went, 
Ugh. Well, I remember I was like texting, like I was texting like my little cousin because she was asking me for help with something, and then I like looked up and I was like, "Oh, oh they, they kiss. kissed. Oh, cool. The movie's over. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it that wasn't sound, that sigh." That you just let out was my feeling the whole movie. It wasn't it for Jeremy me. Jeremy had to look at me multiple times and be like, get off your phone. And I was like, I don't want to watch this. Yeah. It's like... I was like, I'd rather look up who each actor is as they show up on screen than actually yeah. watch this film. It's yeah. like, there for me, there are some interesting character traits. Yes. I like how... Oh, that's why. Alana... And Alana Haim plays Alana in the movie. I like how... Alana isn't, like, only going after, going after, and from my viewpoint, it's, anyways, it's not, like, this movie isn't just about, like, their relationship. Like, Alana is kind of doing whatever she can to get fame. She's going, or to she, get out. she's hanging with young guys. She's hanging with old guys. She's hanging with people her age. She just wants to get out of her situation, which isn't a bad situation. It's just boring. She, just doesn't, she like doesn't like her family life. She feels judged by her, her by her siblings and every boyfriend that she brings home, her dad's like, no. And so I think that's an interesting facet of Alana's character. I feel for Gary, who is the 15-year-old character, who is who is the one uh going after Alana more. Um it's more it's it's more him going after her than her going after him, although she definitely plays into it sometimes. Um, I feel for him where it's like this is a wrong, this is a relationship that I can't really have. I know I'm not supposed to have, but I'm still going to go after it anyways because I'm a 15 year old actor and I'm very confident in myself. Um, he's an actor playing an actor. Yeah, yes. he's an actor playing an actor. It's very much one of those like. Ode to Hollywood bygone. Yeah, you know? a lot of people would say that it is almost a little reminiscent of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a little yeah. bit of The Graduate, which was... Uh, there was there was definitely a shot in that where I was like, this is literally a scene from The Graduate where she puts like her legs up. Yeah. And then, you know, guys like... You're trying feet. to seduce me, Mrs. Robinson. Okay. Yeah, you know, it was like... And I think, I think that was very much like intentional. But, you know, like... No matter, I don't even want to say how, like, I don't even want to call the relationship cute. Like, no matter how the story goes, I just can't get past the age difference. Yeah. It's weird to me, which is why I was like, I hope they stay friends. Because maybe it's like, maybe they, like, discover things about themselves. And it's like, maybe by the end of the movie, they're like, we shouldn't be together. Because this is weird. And really inappropriate. And really inappropriate. But yeah. no, by the end of the movie, it's like, no, we're great for each other. And I'm like... Are you? Like, what happens after this movie? Like, you get married and grow old together? I don't see that happening. Even if even if it was, like, 25 and 35. I don't really believe that these characters are gonna, like... Stay together. Stay together, last, are good for each other. Yeah. I don't know. Like, and I don't know what, like... Like, what I'm supposed to walk away from this movie with. Am I supposed to walk away being like, wow, what a great nostalgia trip. Am I supposed to walk away being like, wow, what a lovely romantic drama. I just don't know. I just don't know. And uh, much like the title, you know, you'd think that licorice pizza probably doesn't taste good. And I'd say you were right. It it's didn't taste good. Bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. Bad taste. Like licorice pizza. Yeah. yeah. Now, why is it called licorice pizza? Uh, apparently, it's based on the fact that people used to call LPs licorice pizza because they're like black and they look like a full pizza. Oh, okay, that makes sense. You told me LP before, but you didn't explain that part. Yeah, that LP makes sense. licorice yeah. pizza. Um, okay. It's an old valley joke that, mm. which it, it feels like, at least to me, as someone who's not on a nostalgia trip watching this movie, who's a young person who didn't live through that time period, that the movie is constantly going like. Eh, you remember this? You, you, you remember this? Eh, you rem and I'm going, no, I don't. I was born in the I, 90s. I don't, I don't, I don't remember, remember any of this. <laughs> and but that should, but that also, that also shouldn't way. stop us from relating to the movies. Because there are right. other movies that, like, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, we weren't born in that area, yeah, right, but got. yet we get the nostalgia, you know? We Belfast, get... I wasn't going like, oh, yeah, like, all the nostalgia of growing up in Belfast. But I was like, oh, I understand 
Kenneth Branagh's nostalgia yeah, with this yeah. period, and yeah. and I think I understand Paul Thomas Anderson's nostalgia for the period because the love, the like I the said, love's there. the love for that story, for that setting, for that time, for that place, it's there. Period. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't really know how to go on. Um, right. in terms of my good, I'll say Benny. Saf Benny Safty, yeah, uh, brother of Josh Safty. The two of them did Uncut Gems and Uncut, Uncut Gems, <laughs> and uh, also the person who wasn't uh, in the primary. Oh my gosh, yes, uh, Joseph Cross. Joseph Cross and Benny Safty have a beautiful scene they that do. steals the movie, yeah. like three quarters of the way in. That I was like, you see, I want to watch this movie. I want to watch the movie. It's like a politic. Spoiler alert for Licorice Pizza. Uh, bleep, 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 bleep. Alana starts working for a politician. She thinks the politician is into her. He calls her one night for a drink. She gets there and he's with another guy. And then he's like, hey, Alana, uh, so you know, like, you're meeting your boyfriend here and you were running late. If anybody asks you, that's why you're here. And the guy is like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are we doing this? Should I wait up for you? Like, what are? Why are you being like this? And it's very much implied that like, he's gay, and in order to continue running, people can't find out, okay. and so they have to be very secret about it. Which and is very real. Yeah, super real. And Joseph Cross and Alana have a beautiful scene after that where they he's do. like, "I'm so sorry you were dragged into this. Like, it's so not fair to you." Men ain't shit. Men ain't shit. They <laughs> suck. Uh, which was beautiful, and I loved it. But that was the only moment of the movie that I was like, wow, I'm really into this. And, and we got right back to the 25 year old And for some reason, Men Ain't Shit is what leads Alana to going back to Gary. The 15 year old? Yeah. yeah, like that. that's the moment where she's like, I know what I have to do. And she runs back to him. They do a lot of running. We made a joke yeah, that yeah. it was like, Take every, a shot time every time they run. They run. <laughs> oh, it's like, Men Ain't Shit, boys are. Yeah. I, it, hate I need like was, a. I need like a. Ill, like you know, like in in Monsters Inc., when like Mike's foot falls in the toilet and Boo goes, "Ew!" Yeah. <laughs> I have that right now because that's, yeah. Yeah, it was just. I looked up some trivia. I don't know if this is actually true, but on IMDb, part of the trivia is that some weird trivia about this. Paul Thomas Anderson's elementary school art teacher was Alana Heim's mother, and he had a crush on her back in the day. And that partially inspired him to write the movie. So it really feels... He's having her real-life daughter play her. Um, what? And his best friend's son Is playing play young him, him yeah. basically, but she's not playing his teacher. Yeah, she's yeah. playing his babysitter, because she's really his babysitter. At the it must not be weird with the Himes, because the whole family is in the movie. Yeah. Alana goes back to her, her, to her house. Her family's by her family. And it's her real-life family. So they must be okay with it, you know? But it was just... it. I can't I, wrap my head around this. This I, is just too weird. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't... I, I could not get past it. And at the end of the movie, I think the thing that really, like, put the period on it for me was, okay, if I made this a movie about a 15-year-old girl and a 25-year-old man, people would be having a very different opinion about this movie than, oh my gosh, it's such a cute nostalgia trip, and he's so much older for his age, and... Oh, aren't they so cute? It'd be like this man is grooming this 15-year-old girl in order to, like, have sex with a child, and that's weird and uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 And it just, it, no. Yeah. No. No. I'm not into... I've, I'm not into that. I'm not into it. <laughs> Now, as much debate as we had over Bradley Cooper, I did enjoy his performance. I enjoyed his performance. However... It's not a best supporting actor. No, not compared nomination. to some, not compared to the other nominations. I and I hate to say the brother, but it's just because I I really cannot remember his name for the life of me. The brother from Coda, I think, deserves the nomination far and away more. Yeah, there are there are numerous performances this year that I could be like, oh, this actor or this actor or this perform. It's I don't I don't get it. I don't yeah. get why SAG nominators were like, yeah, this eight minutes of Bradley heck? Cooper, this is the best supporting actor performance mm -hmm. of the year. Yeah. 
Also, uh, shout out Harriet Sansom Harris, who does, who delivers a great performance as, like, an unhinged talent agent. Yeah. I really, like, that was, like, the one part of the movie that I was, like, genuine, that I was laughing with. And, like, I was laughing throughout the movie, but I think most of it was laughing at the, the story I and the like, writing yeah. than it was me being, like, I agree yeah. that I was just like, <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, I was laughing because I was uncomfortable. I was like, uh, okay, this is where we're going. Uh, okay, I guess. Not for me. Yeah, yeah totally. very totally wasn't not for me. for me. Final verdict. Mm. Yeah, please. You give your number first, Logan. Three out of ten. I was going to give even, four out of ten. Even lower than House of Gucci. Oh, yeah, for sure. I had to I had to move uh, I had to move some movies up a tier to put Licorice Pizza in C tier. Got it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I won't be seeing this one. And, and critics and I was shocked because I'm reading reviews of it and critics are like, it's incredible. It has it has a ninety plus on Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm just like, not we for saw me. very different movies. Apparently, I guess. not for me. Okay. Moving on to things we're actually interested in. Yeah! Hey! Jeremy. Hey, what's up? There's some new trailers that came out this week that you wanted to talk about. There were. I'm really interested in this movie. It was trending on YouTube in the top tens, and it was just a really unexpected... Like, the trailer was super fun, and it looks like it's going to be a fun movie. Bullet Train. Yep. Uh, directed by David Leach, who... Which was interesting because I said it gives me John Wick vibes and then I googled it and he directed the first John Wick. He also directed Atomic Blonde, Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw and it has an all-star cast. Brad Pitt, Joey King, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Tyree Henry, Hiroyuki Sanada, Michael Shannon, Bad Bunny Baby, Zazie Beetz, Logan Lerman, Sandra Bullock. It's based off uh, a novel uh, called Maria Beetle um and it's basically about uh this trained killer he wants to give up the life of an assassin but of course in classic movie trope fashion he gets roped back into one it one last job for that one last job uh and he gets on this bullet train heading from Tokyo to Morioka and there's a bunch of assassins and they have to kill each other they all want the case they all want the case whatever is in the case who knows uh it looks action packed it looks hilarious it looks super fun um i can already see like the sequel like i can already see the franchise that could come out of this and it just it looks like an overall fun time yeah i'm into it yeah um i i, I agree with you i think it looks delightful i think it looks super fun uh not a heavy thinker no, no, no. looks like it's just gonna be action 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 yeah. action action go to the theater have some fun yeah i'm, re I'm ready i'm excited next uh, movie comes out July 15th, 2022. Uh, next month, on April 1st, we have a new Judd Apatow movie coming to Netflix called The Bubble, starring Karen Gillian, Iris Apatow, that's not how you spell his name, Fred Armisen, Maria Bakalova from uh, the Borat 2 movie, uh, David Duchovny, Keegan-Michael Key, Leslie Mann, Kate McKinnon, and Pedro Pascal. This is a pandemic movie. It's a COVID movie. Yeah. It's a literal COVID-19 pandemic movie in which a group of actors, they go to a closed film set uh, to do the sixth installment of this, like, dinosaur movie that kind of looks like Jurassic Park, kind of-ish. Um, and it's just kind of the hijinks that they're up to. Um, it looks really silly. It looks really silly. It looks really meta. Um, this might be the first pandemic movie that I watch. Yeah, my mom, when we watched it together, because I, upon first viewing, I was like, this looks dumb. I don't want to see this. This looks, this is not for me. It's supposed to look dumb, I think. Yeah, uh, my mom's thought was that it's very much a commentary on how uh, film studios will quite often frame their, like, really not super brainy franchises as like, oh, we're doing, we're letting people escape and we're mm. giving people... This really important service for the world. Because we need that. Uh, when in reality... Somehow even heartbreak feels real in a place like this. They're just trying to make money. Yeah. They're just trying to make money and that's what's important to them. It's not about the art. Mm -hmm. It's not about like, yeah. oh, we're doing something special. It's like, yeah. we're a studio yeah. we need to make money. Yeah. And that's not just like, 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 we're not like just inferring here. That's like part of the trailer too. Yeah. It's like, we're one of two movies that are in production right now. If we don't get through this the company's screwed we're over know? which is yeah. not, not true yeah. in any sense but you know very companies freak out yeah. yeah 
it looks like a fun time. Uh, it comes out April 1st. I think I already said that. Uh, April Fool's Day! Yeah, it looks like a fun movie to watch with the boys. On Netflix, yeah. Could be could be delightful. Yeah. Those are just a couple There were some more trailers out. that came out this week, yeah. but they're both coming out next week, so we're going to talk about those in Movies of the Week next week. Uh, mm. So tune in for that on episode 54 of the podcast. This is episode yeah, this 53. Is, this is 53. Yeah. Okay, I I, sometimes Welcome I lose, to 53. Right? I lose track sometimes. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've we been doing this for a we've while. We give an lot. episode title at all at the beginning of this. Uh, yeah. Welcome to episode 53. It's it's one of those movies where like the title comes in 20 minutes into it. And you're like, oh, right. Oh, oh right. Yeah. The title of the movie. I hate it when movies do that. See, I love it. I find it so it's, where it I'm depends, like, oh. It depends sometimes, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, time to... Uh, time to get serious. This yeah. week in Russia. This All week right, in well, Russia. This week Jacob. in Russia news. I'll take us through this one. Yeah. And um, there's a little... So last week... We discussed uh, Formula One's... Uh, There's even more updates to that, but we'll get oh, to that. Oh, yes. Sure. Breaking just today. So, we saw it with the sports world. Now, with the classical music world, specifically in New York City, there have been some updates regarding communist artists. Uh... Russian artists. Russian let's artists. Say, yeah, yeah. But they, they're communists. I mean... Uh, well, let's let's discuss. Um, <laughs> so, the Metropolitan Opera, where I work, we released a statement saying that we stand with U Ukraine and that we're well, basically condemning Putin. Yeah. You know? And saying that we stand with Ukraine. Um, that's the gist of the statement. Uh, any artists that fail to withdraw their support or rescind their vocal, you know, ties to Putin and or Russia. I'm, I'm going to say Putin. Support of Putin. It's Putin, yeah. It's Putin. Um, they are no longer... Welcome at the Met. Welcome at the Met. They will not be performing. Uh, specifically, this happened with soprano Anna Netrebko. She will not be returning to the Met this season to reprise her role as... Turando, and she will not be joining us next season Either. as it stands. Yeah. Um, similarly, uh, at Carnegie Hall, there was set to be a Philharmonic Orchestra performance of um, the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra performing at uh, Carnegie Hall just this past week. And um, Pianist Denis Matsuev and uh, conductor Valerie Gergiev uh, are not, did not perform. And Yannick Nezet Seguin stepped in. Uh, he conducted Fire Shut Up in My Bones. He's the musical yes. director at the Met and he works with the Philadelphia Symphony and Carnegie Hall. He's think like the best conductor of his generation mm. and he stepped in did the performances he's stepping in at the met doing the same thing and he is just a powerhouse and i'd like to give him his flowers because he's just he's doing so much um but yeah um i i want to point work out work is being done yeah i want to point out just because i i appreciated it from the met um for anyone but crying like cancel culture or anything like that um the met gave this soprano ample opportunity to like move away uh and it's not like oh she's russian so we expect her to make a statement this was someone who, over the years, has been very vocal about the fact that she is a fan of Putin. Yeah. She has supported him. She's very much, like, on his side. And when uh, the invasion of Ukraine began, uh, she put out kind of a limp, we should, no war anywhere statement. And mm -hmm. then the next day made another post that was like, the West is being hypocrites and blah, blah, blah. And then shortly after deleted it, it was this whole thing. Uh, yeah. She was given quite the opportunity to keep this role. Um, and she chose not to. Yeah. So the Met did what they had to do. And I, my hat's off to them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see Turndo. Yeah. Because we're moving forward. Hey, we're come getting, see it. I'm yeah, we're getting, a, we're getting a Ukrainian soloist now playing 
turned up. Uh, what do we have her name in our doc? It's not in the doc. Let's pull it up. Yes. Uh, Ukrainian soprano Lidmula Monastyrska. Stryska. Thank you. Monastyrska. She made her debut at the Met in 2012 as Ida. Aida. Aida, thank you. So she is returning now. I think that is the last time that she was at the Met. Um, oh, 10 years later. Yeah, so Great. Um, very excited. This is very cool. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of the Met, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing this production of Turndale. Um, yeah. In, in F1 in news. Similar continuing news. In Russia F1 news. Uh, Team Haas, who we talked about last week. Who removing got their, their sponsorship. Removing their sponsorship. Uh, they have elected to terminate uh, their contract with Nikita Mazepin. Who was really brought in because of the sponsorship that they Affiliated with his father. His father, his Russian father, oligarch. A Russian oligarch had put in the sponsorship. They had already pulled the sponsorship. Um, the writing was kind of on the wall that he was going to go. It's like, therefore, yeah. you know, it's, it's we no It would be similarly to if Lance Stroll Sr. stepped out at... Um, Lawrence Stroll. Maybe. Lawrence Stroll, thank yeah. you. I forget that he's not a junior. Uh, Lawrence Stroll stepped out at Aston, Aston Martin, Martin, and so Aston Martin removed Lance Stroll. Um, we now have a similar thing happening at Haas. Uh, so. Sucks for Nikita. It does. Because... It does. Um, uh, it happens. He also wasn't trailblazing, really, in Formula One. Let's get Grosjean back. Yeah! Uh, let's, get Grosjean. let's get Kevin Magnuson back. Yeah! You know? That was great! You know? That uh, made me happy. I, feel, I, I do feel bad for Nikita Mazepin, um, but it, it is a product of Formula One that there's a lot of nepotism in the sport. There's, there's politics. There's politics. Yeah. There's... The idea of who are your parents and how much money do you have and that's how you get on a team. Yeah. And really the reason that Nikita was picked to be uh, okay. Schumacher's partner yeah. was because of who his father was and how much money he had given to Haas. Yes. So, um, yeah, we're seeing the repercussions of the fact that with his father no longer with the team, yeah. uh, the team wants to go with a new mm. driver. They will be announcing that driver next week and we will definitely talk about that. I am fascinated to see who gets picked up. Yeah. Um, Kimi Raikkonen coming back to Haas. <laughs> Imagine. No. That's my call. No. Kimi. Let's go, Kimi. Come on, baby. Come out of retirement for the fourth time. Dude, take a nap. You, you, you deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, yeah. Kimi Raikkonen's not coming back anymore. He barely wanted to race last year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well. Big corporations making big decisions. Uh, and the other thing, because we kind of talked about it last week, but now it's more official. Um, not only has the Russian Grand Prix been postponed, but it's been scrapped altogether. Uh, F1 <coughs> officially announced that the Russian Grand Prix was done. They were not planning to race there any time in the future. Um, I don't think even if this invasion ends, they're planning to go back. They're very much like, okay. We're good. We We're done. We see where you stand. We oh, see where you guys on this, are. On the side of genocide. Great. We're out. Yeah. So very proud of F1. Happy to be a fan. Uh, excited to check out season four of Drive to Survive when it premieres on Netflix <gasps> this... next week. Next week. The eleventh, I yeah. believe. Um, this week this podcast. Week. Yeah. What's this week? Next week for us. I hate it when I we know. do this, guys. It's still this week. It's That's why I said days, next week, you know. but it's this week if they're watching. We gotta, we gotta help the peoples. Yeah. It's in Get a couple people. days. Yeah. Check out uh, Formula One Drive to Survive. Speaking yeah. of things that are coming out this week. Oh my gosh, what, what a segue. What's coming out this week, my man? Well, there's Tell a lot of cool movies. I'm so excited! So I'm gonna talk about them. Hopefully this will be shorter than last week. It's definitely going to be longer than two weeks ago. Um, there's some cool movies. There's nothing coming out to VOD or digital, which is normally what I start with. So all we have to talk about is new stuff. We're starting with The Hyperions, uh, which is coming to us from The Daily Wire, which is best known for being Ben oh. Shapiro's news company. No. I know. No, I will. I know. However, uh, <laughs> this movie looks interesting. It looks like it's telling the story of a professor who creates these devices that give kids superpowers. He has a team of kids who are superheroes. He then replaces them. 
uh, and they come back years later to try and reclaim their powers by breaking into his museum. Mm -hmm. um, it's either going to be a really interesting movie with something really fascinating to say about the way that we use people and the way that we... Superhero. Superhero. Culture, you know? Yeah, the way we throw people away when we deem them no longer useful. Or it's just going to be like a screwball comedy uh, with some superhero elements. Either way, I'm intrigued. Um, it's directed and written by John McDonald. It's the only movie that is coming out Thursday the 10th. Everything else is coming out Friday the 11th. Uh, so check it out if it seems like your cup of tea. All the rest of the movies that we are talking about, uh, except for one documentary. I'll touch on that later. Uh, but they're all coming out on Friday, March 11th. Friday's movie day. We know that. Uh, so we're going to start with the only nationwide release this week uh, called Tyson's Run. Tyson's Run tells the story of Tyson, a boy growing up in rural America with autism, and the journey he goes through to be accepted not only by his town, but by his father, by running in the town's first ever marathon. Hmm. Directed by Kim Bass, who was the creator of Sister, Sister, and wow. Kenan and Kel, wow. and starring Major Dodson, who was diagnosed with autism when he turned four. He's been talking about that as Very the movie cool. has been uh, being promoted. The movie also features Arshad Abdi, who's best known for his Oscar-nominated performance in Captain Phillips, which we absolutely loved him in. I am um, the captain now. I'm excited to see this movie. Uh, in talking to my mom about it before the podcast, shout out Mama Bruner, uh, she said, as someone who grew up in the South, in a town where being in sports was really the one way that you got accepted by people, if you weren't an athlete, you were a loser. Mm. Uh, this really inspired and touched her, so she's super interested in it. Uh, so we will probably be checking that out. Coming to Disney Plus this week is our newest Pixar movie, Turning Red. The story of a 13-year-old girl who begins turning into a giant red panda whenever she gets too excited. Directed and written by Dami Shi, who also did Bao, which was yes. a short for Pixar, oh. which I loved. Oh I thought it was God. so cute. Mm -hmm. uh, we always love a Pixar movie, so, you know, super excited. Cast is, of course, awesome. I'm super excited to see Asian representation in a Pixar film. However, yeah. I do have to point out this is another Pixar movie where the POC lead spends most of the movie as not a human. So, let's maybe stop doing that. Let's yeah. maybe do one Pixar movie where our POC lead gets to stay a human being for the whole movie. That yeah. would be really cool. It would, wouldn't it? That aside, I'm definitely going to be watching the movie. It looks good. It looks cute. Uh, I think it's going to have a lot of really great things to say about growing up as a woman, uh, being told by society to not be too big. There's very mm. much been a conversation uh, about specifically women of color and having to really shrink themselves down and, and make sure that they're not too loud or too excited or too angry. So this movie really seems to be touching on that idea of like her parents being like, you have to make sure you're in control and her friends being like, no, we accept you for who you are, and we like this. We like your emotion and your energy. So um, we will see what the movie has to say. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Uh, coming to Netflix this week, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have The Atom Project, a sci-fi time travel adventure starring newcomer Walker Scobill alongside Ryan Reynolds, Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Garner, Catherine Keener, and Zoe Saldana. The movie looks... So fun. Uh, I'm super excited. Um, little mini, like, personal pride thing. Uh, Walker, this is his first movie. Uh, him and me have the same agent. So uh, oh. I feel like I gotta, I gotta shout that out. Shout out Victoria Cress. Uh, she's amazing. Um, I'm very excited about this movie. It's directed by Sean Levy, uh, who's really well known as the executive producer of this little show called Stranger Things. He also directed Free Guy, uh, which also starred Ryan Reynolds. This movie has been written by just a slew of amazing sci-fi writers. Uh, Jonathan Trooper, who wrote Warrior for AMC and This Is Where I Leave You, which was a very different movie, but also very, very good. Uh, T.S. Nowlin, who wrote the Maze Runner trilogy. Jennifer Flackett and Mark Levin, who wrote Big Mouth and Journey to the Center of the Earth. Uh, the movie looks like it's going to be pretty epic. I already know I'm going to be watching it. I like a sci-fi good time, so let's do this. Looks cool. Moving into the indies of the week because uh, those are the ones that I really like to shout out. We, we love our nationwide releases, but we've got to support indie filmmakers because they don't get enough love. Um, we have Gold, starring Zac Efron in a very different role than we're used to. 
It looks much more in the vein of extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile than High School Musical. Uh, the movie is a look at the near-distant future, where two travelers discover the largest gold nugget ever. Uh, one leaves, uh, I'm assuming, to get the supplies to extract said nugget, uh, while the other, played by Efron, stays behind to guard the nugget from thieves, wolves, and anything else that might come along. It looks gritty, super cool. It's directed by Anthony Hayes, who plays the second traveler. Uh, he wrote it alongside Polly Smith. I'm very into the side of Zac Efron. I honestly really love him as an actor. I think he's very, very talented and does not get enough credit. So I'm super interested to see this movie from him. Uh, I want more. I want more dark movies from Zac Efron. I feel like I feel like it's also going to be like character versus their own sanity. Yes. Because what I got from the trailer is like Zac Efron's character is questioning if this guy is even coming back. Yes. Like, is it like maybe he's just waiting for me to die yes. so he could take all the nugget for that himself? That was the same feeling yeah. I got was the guy on the phone being like, I'm almost there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be there soon. I'm going to get mm -hmm. you. But it was, it's this like do I have to drag this thing back myself mm -hmm. or am I going to trust that this guy who I think has my back is going to have my back? Um, I'm super interested in this. Uh, next up on my list, we have Ultrasound, uh, which at first glance, I was really not into. The trailer started and I was like, okay, whatever. But then 30 seconds in, I completely changed my opinion. Uh, unreliable narrator turned up to an 11. I have zero idea what this movie is actually about. Honestly, just go watch the trailer because I feel like myself trying to explain what happens in the trailer is going to take as long as you watching it. Um, a feature film debut from Rob Schroeder. This one really caught my eye. I cannot stop thinking about it. I think it looks super interesting. It's either going to be really, really cool and psychological or really, really stupid. And I'm hoping it's the the former. I'm so hoping that I enjoy this. So ultrasound, check it out. Our final narrative film of the week is one I don't know if I'm going to see, but it definitely looks interesting enough to talk about. Moon Manor is the story of Jimmy who has decided that today he's going to die and he's going to throw a party to remember his life. Uh, it seems to be a social an analysis of what it means to live and what it means to die. Uh, I'm at least intrigued by the concept. It's directed and written by Elizabeth Brizenden, who's also known as Machete Bang Bang, that's which I was sweet. like, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, that in and of itself, I was like, this, I have to check out this movie. Uh, and her writing and directing partner, Aaron Granite, uh, this one is definitely worth, worth a look if you're into dark humor. Sounds very dark comedy. Yeah, it looks super dark comedy. It looks super like analysis of um, how we honestly remember people the most once they're gone. Uh, Jimmy says in the trailer, I always found it ridiculous that you're never, you're not invited to the one party where everybody says how much they love you. Um, so it looks super interesting. Two documentaries this week. Uh, the first one, uh, comes out, uh, at the same time as all the other movies on Friday, March 11th. I Am Here tells the story of Ella, a 98 year old, uh, who is one of two members of her family to survive the Holocaust. Uh, this documentary examines her life and her feelings now living in 2021 uh, with Nazis back on the rise. Uh, told as both a straight documentary and animated to retell her story of her journey. Uh, she survived three different concentration camps. Uh, I think this movie is going to be super important to our national dialogue for the next couple of years. So I think it's definitely worth taking a look at. Last but not least, coming out on Monday the 14th, uh, we have The Last Mountain, which is the tragic story of 20-year-old climber Tom Ballard, who was killed attempting to climb the killer mountain Nanga Parbat in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a new movie for people who really loved Free Solo a couple years ago. The movie looks to examine the lengths that people, especially climbers, are willing to go to be great and to be remembered. Because Tom, uh, when he passed away, was already a legend in the climbing community. He had already done some major climbs that no one had done. And this was his like, I have to do this to be remembered. Uh, so I'm, I'm always interested in those kinds of movies, the lengths that we, uh, especially the more modern generation are going to be remembered in a world where everyone is famous. Is anyone famous? Um, that looks interesting. So check it out if you're into movies like that. If you're into climbing documentaries, that one is for you. Those are the movies coming out this week that we are interested in. There's a couple more. Yeah, I, I moved pretty quickly. 
Uh, the rest are in the description below. They are not on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, Plus, so don't look there. Nope. Uh, but definitely check them out. Let us know what you're watching. Um, I might start adding TV shows to this segment if I can get it quick enough. Because I don't that, feel like we talk about TV. Put that section on triple speed. <laughs> um, that's it. Those are the movies coming out. Uh, but let's talk about some things that we've seen now that we've talked about what we want to see. Some content that we are consuming. Jacob, you want to kick us off? Yeah. Um... My Marvel shows aren't on Netflix anymore. I knew this would happen. The They're day coming, came. You you can They're, you can look back at the podcast where I said they were coming to Disney yeah, Plus. I know they're coming to Disney Plus, but at the moment they're not. <laughs> I know they're coming, but they're not there. In eleven days. From today or from when this podcast is out? From today. Uh, from today, the fifth, from, in from which recording. we are recording. <laughs> okay. I can wait another 11 days. It's less than two weeks. Yeah, I'm almost done with Cyberpunk. Nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. It's been taking me a while to get through it. But it's a big game. Yeah, it's almost done. Uh, but I watched Mr. Bean's Holiday again last night. Cute. Oh, cute. Fun. Funny movie. Uh, I'm really, I'm not watching anything. I watched West Side Story again. Nice. Great. I'm seeing... Seeing... Some more things to talk about. Mm. I'm seeing some more things to talk about. Okay. I'll, I'll collect my thoughts and we'll discuss. Yeah. Um, we can do a retrospective. Yeah. We totally forgot to talk about who won the SAG Awards. Forgot? Yeah. yeah, you know, I was like, I feel like there's a lack of things going on this week. And there was well, a you whole... were consuming that. Why don't you discuss? Yeah. It was the SAG Awards. SAG Awards were a week and a half ago. Um... Coda took some great wins. Very, very happy for them. Well deserved. So happy they won. The only reason I thought about it was because you were talking about West Side Story and Ariana mm. DeBose won yeah. Best Supporting Actress, which I thought she super deserved. Jessica Chastain and Will Smith took home awards for uh, Best Leading Actress and Actor, respectively. Wow, Will Smith. Yeah. Okay. In terms like of TV it. shows, we got... Uh, Wait, shout out to... Oh, yeah, in terms of TV shows. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we got Succession and... Squid Game. Squid Game won the Actor Awards. Yeah. It didn't win uh, uh, Best Show. No, but yeah, in yeah. terms of TV, I mean, yeah, they, they did. Yeah. They, they took some big drama. awards. Yeah, yeah. For, for drama, our big winners were the two stars of Squid Game, Lee Jong Jae and Hoi Chan. Is that correct? I'm doing that straight off memory. Hoi Yeon Jung and Hoi Lee Jong Jae. Lee Jong Jae, I did get right. Uh, Hoi Yeon Jung, who was in her first role ever and won a SAG award for it. She yes, is let's go. My favorite character in that show. Um, Succession won for Best Drama and Brian Cox gave a very beautiful speech mm -hmm. about supporting the people of Ukraine. Uh, Ted Lasso won Best Comedy, of course. Jason Sudeikis and um, Jean Smart won for Best oh. uh, Female Actor in a Comedy Series for Hacks. Kate Winslet won for Best Actress in a Miniseries for her role in Mayor of Easttown. Uh, and in my opinion, the speech of the night uh, Michael Keaton uh, for Dope Sick. Mm. He won Best uh, Actor in a Miniseries or TV Very movie. Very emotional speech. He was in the bathroom when he won. He did <laughs> not think he was going to win. He uh, Salma Hayek was <laughs> waiting on stage being like, come on, Michael. <laughs> she was like, I have stage fright. <laughs> I have stage fright. Let me get off the stage. Uh, he raced to the stage and uh, basically his whole speech, they were like, wrap it up, Michael, wrap it up. Uh, but he gave a speech about his nephew who passed away of opiate addiction. Dedicated the uh, award to him. He dedicated the award to him and to his sister who uh, lost her son. Um, Dope Sick is a very important show. Uh, Jake and I both auditioned for it. And I feel like we both knew when we were auditioning how important it was going to be. I think the character got cut. Yeah, me too. Um, because I feel like they wanted to focus more on the people who were the victims than the people who were the perpetrators. Yeah. Uh, the Sackler family, which took millions of dollars to essentially poison America and lie to them, uh, saying that um, this this new drug was uh, not addictive, there was no chance that you were going to get addicted to it, it was going to change the way that modern medicine dealt with pain, uh, and it led to the most devastating uh, opiate pandemic in this country that is still being felt to this day. There's still... I mean, yeah, I know. Euphoria. There's yeah. an entire show now about the complete like 
circle that we've come in where now children are getting addicted to these things still to this day because uh, this family wanted to make money. Um, so very proud of him and very proud that he used his platform to uh, speak on that. I know we talked about it already with Coda being the big winner. Shout out to Troy Kotzer, who won uh, for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, he gave a beautiful performance mm -hmm. in that film. And shout out to the SAG Awards and their translators who were like on it for they the night. They, it, were, yeah. they were really getting those speeches right. Um, we love you. So, shout out to the SAG Awards. Um, I completely interrupted you. I'm so sorry. Do no, you have anything else I passed. Consuming? No, I passed the mic to you. Okay, cool. Um, we watched White Lotus. We are almost done with it. We are one yeah. episode away and loving it. Yeah. Um, I have been playing Elden Ring, which is very, very fun. Uh, I've liked it better than any of the other Dark Souls, Bloodborne, any of that that I've ever played. Super into it. I say check it out if you haven't already. Um, still watching The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, watching Inventing Anna, which is delightful. Shout out Ari Moyad, who was on uh, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert uh, and gave a great interview. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've watched anything else that I really want to shout out for the week, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, yeah, that's what I'm consuming. Still playing Horizon Forbidden West, having a fun time. That's the game I go to when I'm sick of being punished <laughs> over Elden and Ring. over and over again in Elden Ring, which I'm also having a lot of fun with, but, you know, sometimes I'm just like, you know, so, so, sometimes I want to not die in two hits uh, and feel like a badass with red hair shooting shooting arrows at prehistoric robot dinosaurs. Um, so I'm playing those two games. Uh... I watched another episode and a half of Euphoria. Um, I got two episodes left. I'm excited to see how we wrap this up. Of season one. Just of season one, yes. Specify. Yes. Season one. We haven't. And then you gotta watch two. the two standalones. We gotta watch the two standalones yeah. and then catch up on season two. While you find music that you're consuming this week, Which uh, I don't think I am. The two categories that I forgot about the SAG Awards, but I want to make sure that I actually cover because. They're already neglected by uh, the artistic community. Uh, no Time to Die won for Outstanding Stunt Ensemble. Yay. And Squid Game won for Outstanding Stunt Ensemble. Oh, Squid yeah. Game, uh, mm. I believe, to be the first Korean drama to take one SAG Award, and they took three in one night. Uh, Fantastic. Very, very happy for that show that I still have to watch. Yeah, mm -hmm. Logan. Yes, it's so dark. It's so dark. You don't even know that yet. And I, I do know that. <laughs> he knows it's dark, and he's right. It's dark. Yeah, but it's... But I gotta watch it. I gotta watch, watch it. darker. Yeah? Yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty much all I'm consuming that I want to shout out. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. That being said. There you go. That was episode 53 of the podcast. Logan, do we have any comments? Uh, we got a bunch this week, actually. Yo! Um... Mostly they're about Jacob, to be honest. Yay! Uh, and mostly they're just on uh, his cover of Lucy, which is um, blowing up. Uh, we got a comment that I'm sure we're going to reply to, but uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity, if you want to, to reply to it on this show. Uh, someone asked you for the chords in Lucy. If you can't remember them off the top of your head, I'll, <laughs> we'll get to it later. It's, it's the same four chords as every song. G, E minor, C, D... Uh, but I played it on the fourth fret, I think. I can't tell where my capo is on that thumbnail, but I'm pretty sure the capo is on the fourth fret, and I'm playing G, E minor, C, D, in that order, loop, for the whole song, <laughs> pretty much. And it sounds Except great. the bridge. The bridge is C, G, C, E minor, GD, whatever. It's been a very long time <laughs> yeah. since we recorded that cover. It has been a time. And Jacob hasn't been playing guitar for a couple months. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, those are the chords. Those are our comments. We got a lot of love. Thank you all so much for your yeah. love on our Lucy video. Um, it's very interesting to see a video that we put out like a year ago get just a sudden spike in love. Uh, mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Uh, welcome to the new subscribers who subscribed because of that video. Yay! We appreciate you. Welcome. Um... And find us on social media. Follow us there. We're pretty much everywhere except Twitter. We were on yeah. Twitter for a little bit. I think we still have an so account. So briefly, but yeah, it was from not like to last. Three years ago. Twitter's not really our place. No, give us some likes. Give us some comments. Share our stuff, please. We'd love that. And yeah, yeah. Be super, 
be awesome. We love you. Shout out to Anchor for sponsoring the podcast. Yet As again. always. We love you. We love you. Thank you for your service. Give um, us more ads. We'd love to give them to you. Yeah. 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 Um, well, is there anything else we need to say before we dip out? I don't think so. I think we're done. All right. Sweet. Well, I'm Jeremy Van Suarez. I'm Logan Riley Bruner. And I'm Jacob Wade. And, uh... You're not just wrong. You're stupid. Good night. Didn't get to use it. All right. Bye. Have a beautiful time.